Hello everyone, it is your lovely host, The Gaming Weasel, and in today's video we're gonna be covering our beautiful and beloved Korra and how to make her basically invincible inside of a steel path, give you extra loot, and also give you those big juicy red damage numbers that you see on the screen and that you love so much. So, quickly getting into Korra and her abilities. We're gonna start off with the, I guess, least annoying ones to explain. We have Ensnare, the Ensnare, you target an enemy and it drags a certain a number of enemies in a certain radius depending on your power range of course and then those uh, enemies take extra damage when you hit them with your whip claw and that's gonna be 200% extra damage now we do have Strangledorm, who fourth ability. Fourth ability summons one Strangledorm, or you can summon two if you really want to. And inside of these, the enemies get trapped. And with this beautiful augment up on the screen, the Pilfering Strangledorm augment, you get 65% extra chance of getting extra loot. So that is very, very juicy. Ensnares enemies, and once you hit an enemy with Whip Claw, the damage gets distributed to every single enemy ensnared, or I guess entrapped inside of the strangle dome and then it is distributed by 50 percent so that is pretty cool now whip claw the one of the most annoying abilities to explain but i'll try to do my best we here we have the damage it is distributed equally between the impact puncture and slash so all three are the same the whip claw has innate 25 percent critical chance which can be maxed out at 275%, a 200% critical multiplier, and then 20% status chance. The damage is affected by ability strength, also certain melee mods and the melee combo counter. Now, it doesn't matter what weapon you use, you can use any weapon that you want. If you want certain bonuses, you can use certain weapons. I'll leave a little bit of a list up on the screen of some of the bonuses and you can use that and basically go free and use the mods that I would demonstrate and that I would recommend. Now, melee combo counter as well, the higher it goes, the better it is for your damage for your whip claw. And a couple of things that I want you guys to know. The Zorus, the Tenant Grigori, and the Tenant Livia cannot be used with Whip Claw because they melee combo counter resets every time these weapons are equipped. So do not equip these three weapons and you're gonna be pretty much safe. And let's move on to the actual melee build because we want to see that. So I'm using the Cronin Prime. You can use, for example, the Predos for its incarn for evolutions as well. We have Pressure Point, Gladiator Might, Organ Shatter, Sacrificial Steel, we have Shocking Touch, Prime Fever Strike, Spoil Strike, and then, of course, Carnus Mandible. Now, a couple of things that I want you guys to know. Critical Chance, Critical Damage, Base Damage, and then, of course, we do have Elemental Damage, will increase the damage of your Whip Claw. Of course, putting the 60-60 mods is basically useless because you don't need increased status chance, but you can put them on if you really want to. But if you, of course, want to be really smart, and the build that I honestly recommend that you guys use and try out for yourself as well, see which one suits you more, is this build on the screen. Basically, what we did is we took out the Prime Fever Shrike, replaced it with Blood Rush, and then Shocking Touch, we replaced that with Weeping Wounds. Now, Weeping Wounds and, of course, our beloved Carnus Mandible have really good stats together. That's why I did not use Buzzkill. When you increase the Slash weighting of your weapon, and then that will increase by Whip Claw as well, that means we're going to have more Slash. With our Panzer Vopophila giving us Viral, that's going to be incredibly good for end game. Now, the way it gives you more is, I'm, I was even trying to understand this the best myself, because of Carnus Mandible giving you 90% plus 60% status chance, with the Weeping Wounds buff, you get around 500% buff, and that's going to be totaling out to around 50%, 58% towards Slash, and then everything else is going to be Impact and Puncture. That's how we get even more slash, and this is the build, or I guess that was the build that I definitely recommend you guys use. But sorry for the interruption, editing game weasel here, and one thing that I forgot to mention are rivens. Now, having a melee riven is going to be extremely good, because rivens usually give you incredibly good stats. Like, for example, I have my Hespar riven over here, and I use my Hespar for my stat stick on my Korra. Now, this riven gives me critical chance, gives me heat, and gives me melee 
damage and negative to critical chance while sliding. Basically what you want on your Riven is CC or critical chance, critical damage, you want base damage and elemental damage. Those are the things that you're looking for. If it has a negative that doesn't impact the damage in any way or shape or form, it's going to be even better because then the stats are going to be just that a bit higher. Now, does the build change in any way? Well, of course it does because we are using the Hespar and of course our little Riven. We change the Gladiator Might and put our Riven inside of there and everything else basically stayed the same. And that's it. Now, coming back to the video, we want to see the Coral build. The Coral build looks like this. Brief Respite, Rolling Guard. Brief Respite and or Shield Gating is the best way to survive and the only way to survive with Cora, and that's why we use Rolling Guard and Brief Respite. We are also using the Augment with Cumulating Whip Claw. Now, what this does, hitting three enemies will grant 35% stacking damage bonus to subsequent Whip Claws. Bonus will decay after 10 seconds. So, you can increase, this is a flat 35%, this cannot be changed with Power Strength or anything. So, you can basically increase it times 12 and then even more. So, incredibly good for uh, this ability to be here, I guess this mod to be here. Now, we do have Equilibrium. You might be saying, why do we have Equilibrium? Because I didn't mention the third ability, because the third ability is Lycan's Hunt. Now, Lycan's Hunt is ability subsumed from Varuna. What this basically does, you activate this ability, it has a certain duration, while it lasts, killing enemies with your melee weapon, accumulating whip, or I guess whip claw, considered a melee weapon as well, because it is a pseudo exalt you kill enemies, you get health, and with this beautiful equilibrium mod, you can also get energy. And the way you need to keep it up is using the weapon such as the Cedo, and basically what you're going to be doing is applying status effects to enemies. With enemies killed with five or more status effects affected on them, you will increase the timer of Lycan's Hunt, it will last longer. So that's why we all want ourselves a good amount of duration with Primed Flow. We do have, of course, Power Shrine mods, Blind Rage, and we do have Orcon Shards. Now, we have two for critical melee damage, or I guess, yeah, critical melee damage, and then one for 15% extra power strength, and two for 50 energy. So, totally 100. Honestly, instead of Umbral Vitality, if you don't need it, you can go on and put Prime Flow, because I've been using this Warframe with Archon Shards, without them, with them, and also Prime Flow. Honestly, the best way to play this Warframe, in my opinion, is putting on Prime Flow. It's just that I cannot afford it, because I'm pretty bad at keeping up my Shield Gate. Now, Arcane Fury and Arcane Energies are more my Arcanes of choice. You can choose whichever one you want, I just prefer you guys have Arcane Fury because of the critical damage that it gives you. And instead of Cutting Drift, you can also put Primed Sure-Footed, if you do have it, I decided to put Cutting Drift for extra range. And Arcane Energize for, of course, extra energy. So, basically, that is it. All you need to do is equip a Dragon Key, get yourself inside of there because you're using your community whip call a lot actually all of the time and building up that combo counter you basically are going to be getting a lot of health orbs energy orbs resources as well and a lot of damage now keep this in mind one of the best things that you can do is uh, chose the focus school that allows you to, I guess, have a power spike from out. It's up on the screen right now. I cannot remember it for the hell of it, but there you go. It's up on the screen right now. It's uh, that definitely because then it doesn't disappear completely. It just decays by five. So definitely the school of choice for me. Nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, do leave a like, a comment, and do subscribe for more. If I missed anything out or maybe I said something wrong, could be possible, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Leave it in the comment section down below i will of course atone for what i have done and i will see you guys on the next one the gaming weasel over and out